Hello YouTube, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the PowerBook G4 Titanium, which is the laptop that you see right here, but I guess you already uh, figured that out. Now, if you take a look at this machine, on the outside it seems a little bit rough on the, around the edges, and it's been used a lot, it seems very very worn indeed, but in reality it's only purely cosmetic, and it's only really the white paint that's starting to sort of degrade. It really takes absolutely nothing for it to uh, to peel off. In fact, I accidentally had a little bit of that orange tape that you find on the inside of these older Macs stuck to here. And as you can see, the paint completely peeled off. So it's just the paint job that's completely gone. And uh, otherwise this machine is absolutely mint. It really is. This is the top of the machine, and as you can see here with the light shining directly on, on top of it, you really can discern a lot of scratching, just a little bit of smudging, just some dirt, that's really it. And the same really can be said for the bottom, as you can probably tell. No major dents, just some fingerprints and smudges, but that's really it. So overall this machine really is in absolutely mint condition. And I want this in an auction for about 40 bucks, so I think that's a pretty good deal for one of these. These uh, titanium power books really seem to have started to claim a premium in order to actually uh, get your hands on one of these. So me, as a power PC aficionado, I really wanted to have this thing for my collection. So that's what I did. It even still has the fully intact port door here on the back, as you can see there. In the middle it has a little bit of a vent for the fan. These really have some tiny fans, but should be good. First off, we have a Firewire port over here, which is Firewire 400. Here is a gigabit ethernet port. Yes, this machine already has gigabit, and it's from 2001, so that's pretty remarkable. We have two USB 1.1 ports. 2.0 uh, didn't exist in 2001. It started to become mainstream around 2003-ish. Here we have, of course, the vent that I just mentioned, a VGA port, which indicates that this is the very first generation of PowerBook G4. The later models all had DVI ports instead, but this one still has a VGA and an S-Video port right here. Here is the 56K modem, and between that is a little bit, is the, uh, there's a little button here, it's the programmer's button. So that's special, I guess. Here on the right-hand side, we find the IR blaster. And over here is a power port. On the left hand side of the laptop we find a headphone jack, an intake, and this is where the airport card is located. With a little bit of a button here, which would work if this was the PC card slot. But in this model, if you uh, can't actually see this slot here, it has the airport card right behind it. And here is some uh, other thingy-majig no uh, freaking idea. Here on the front we have the button for the latch and an optical drive slot. This machine originally came with a combo drive. The drive was feeling a bit sorry, it really sounded like it was on its last legs. So I swapped it out for a uh, combo drive that I had uh, for from my very first iBook. And that drive is absolutely healthy and sounds uh, very nice and quiet. Here's some more venting and a Kensington lock. So let's uh, open it up. Very tight hinges, very tight indeed. Also a sign of how little this machine was used in its life. I'll uh, try to make it a little bit more clear by shining some more light on here. That's a lot of light. Let's just, uh, you can see right there, it is a nice translucent keyboard. Also, if you take a look at the display here, as you can see, it does have a little bit of indentation and scratching because the keyboard actually hits the display. You can definitely discern that. But other than that, the display is actually looking pretty good. This is the original display, so it runs at a resolution of uh, 11 by 8, which is weird, but it works. And uh, yeah. There's really not a whole of uh, hell of a lot of on this machine that actually shows signs of wear. So, as you can see here, the trackpad doesn't light up any or anything. It's really looking quite quite nice. So, yeah, 
it's still very smooth. And uh, this uh, button here feels absolutely fine. Keyboard is in great condition, no major signs of wear on the most used keys. So uh, yeah, and it's actually original Dutch keyboard, so that's very nice. Not a Dutch keyboard layout, but it actually has Dutch writing on it, which is quite unique. That's uh, no longer a thing, so it really shows this machine is a blast from the past. The battery is pretty much shot, it will last for about 30 seconds or so. It's still the original battery from 2002 when this machine was made. So that's pretty neat, I suppose. But uh, let's turn it on and see what she does. There we go, a little bog there. The volume isn't turned all the way up, so... But it can get reasonably loud. I'd say the speakers on this are a little bit better than on my iBook G4, but... They're nothing too special. There we go, there's the Happy Mac symbol. I'll just uh, zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better, better idea on what's going on on the screen. There we go. Starting up Mac OS 9.2.2. By the way, this is my very first laptop that I own uh, that can run Mac OS 9. I mean, of course I've used desktops before, like Power Mac G4s, that could uh, run Mac OS 9 just fine. I also have an iMac G3 and an iMac G4 that can run OS 9, which is neat. But so can this machine. This is just a uh, 667 megahertz titanium PowerBook 15 inch. Originally came with a 30 gigabyte 4200 RPM hard drive. I think it was, yeah. I swapped it out for a much healthier sounding uh, Hitachi Travel Star that I had, 40 gig 5400 RPM. And it really transformed the machine in terms of speed. I mean, I'm, I'm dual booting this with Tiger, just because that's what I had laying around. I could find uh, the easiest. Uh, in my drawer, and uh, even that runs remarkably well, even though this machine uh, only has 512 megs of RAM. So there's that. Right now we're only using like 60 megabytes of RAM, just with this bare bones uh, install of Mac OS 9. So let's actually turn down the resolution a bit to 720 by 480 and uh, play a little round of Doom. Well, that's the wrong folder. Macintosh HD, Ultimate Doom. It's the only game that I have installed right now, so uh, it's still a very, very fresh install. So yeah, like I said, I've also been inside this machine now, and I can definitely tell that this machine's in good condition because even the bonding on the inside, I mean, this is not really a titanium laptop. It's titanium reinforced by plastic, which is cemented to the titanium. And uh, that uh, basic plastic skeleton is still in absolutely great condition. So that's very nice. But yeah, as you can see, we can play Doom. Of course, I would prefer to play Doom on my 486, so. But, hell, this thing can do it, at least. Uh, yep, set me back to millions of colors, please. So we can get the resolution back up. There we go. It's really sharp, by the way, this display. I mean, it is that weird resolution at uh, 1152 by 768. But it's really sharp on this 15-inch display. It's really remarkable, I'd say. And uh, yeah, I've got everything working, including all the uh, various function buttons. That's something that I uh, never got working properly on other machines that supported these features. I guess I never really tried to get them to work, but uh, there's that. And if we were completely crazy, we could in fact even do video editing on this, with, with this very early version of uh, iMovie. Oh uh, yeah, I sure dumped that over there. This is iMovie version. Something or other. It's not actually showing. That's probably like iMovie 1 or something like that. But it's pretty neat that it can do it. We also have iTunes 2, which is very old. 
And then, if we wanted to browse the web on this machine, we could use Glossilla. I'm currently not connected because uh, I don't have a Wi-Fi router currently installed or an access point that will take WEP encryption. This airport card will support WPA, but only if the software around it supports it, and macOS 9 does not. So, so there's that. Right, so what else can I show right now? Well, I guess I could show Microsoft Office here. This is Office for Mac 98. And uh, yep, it's your basic word processing. It really resembles Office 97 uh, for Windows, except of course with the, with the uh, look of Mac OS. And as you can see, it is very snappy. It really is. With its 667 megahertz G4. All right. And we also have Internet Explorer and Outlook Express for those of you that want to uh, get their mail the old way. I personally don't care for that at all. I prefer to stay in the IMAP way of life and of course Microsoft Exchange because that's just the way that I roll. Either way, this uh, has been pretty much the overview of the macOS 9 side of things. So let's take another quick look at uh, macOS 10 on this machine. If I can find it. It's right here. There we go. Startup disk. Drew a blank there. Uh, currently it's still a 10.4.6. I don't really want to bother to update it. But uh, this will give you a good idea on uh, how reasonably quick this hard drive is in this machine now. And it's also one of the very easiest power books, or at least the very uh, easiest of uh, PowerPC Macs that I've worked on in terms of repairability. This machine is pretty easy. I mean, you can access a lot of things under the keyboard, and uh, all the other major components are on the underside of the machine. You just have to unscrew the bottom, and it'll pop right off, and you can... Uh, get to the hard drive and the optical drive, so you could easily swap them out. That's what I had to do. I mean, the original hard drive was really a clunker. It really didn't sound healthy at all, and neither did the optical drive, so... That was an easy fix, because I had to spare parts laying around, so, yeah. Wow, I had a lot of stuff open. Okay. Let's close all that. Take a look at about his Mac. Here you can see we're dealing with a 667 megahertz PowerPC G4, 512 megabytes of PC133 SD RAM. And uh, something that I completely forgot to mention, the graphics card in this is actually reasonably good for what it was. It's mentioned here as the Rage M6, but the official GPU is the ATI Mobility Radeon. The very first card that bared the more than the Radeon name, so that's pretty cool. So there is that. This OS X installation is completely barren, there's nothing on here except for a shit ton of macOS 9 images because I wanted to restore it to the disk because I uh, don't have any bootable OS 9 media so I had to do it the, uh, the ghetto way. <laughs> but as you could see it was really working just fine. So I'm just going to set it up to boot right back into macOS 9 because that's going to be the main operating system on this machine. And then uh, I'm going to wrap up the video here by saying thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, there's definitely more stuff to come on this machine as well. I'm also working on more videos on the HP Thin clients. I've got some parts uh, on the way that I can use to uh, do some more fun experiments with that thing. And uh, maybe some more server stuff, who knows. Uh, but I've got some stuff in the pipeline and uh, hopefully I can get uh, some more videos out in the future. Which is being a little bit difficult because I had another laptop video planned but uh, the seller of that machine so sent me the wrong one and now the shipping company has actually lost the uh, replacement. So that really cost me the better part of a month and uh, this was the only interesting thing that I got in the meantime. So uh, bear with me with the... Uh, shoddy upload schedule here, but uh, I'm definitely working on things. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.